let's get to our first story here from Breitbart.com and the wonderful AWR Hawking. So we have this headline, not great. Judge denies preliminary injunction against ATF pistol brace rule. We thought that we were kind of waiting for SCOTUS at this point, but nope, this thing is still being worked out in different courts, different lawsuits, and so forth, which means, you know, our, our hopeful, which we are all hopeful based on Bruin and Heller and the recent decisions by the court to come down and smack the ATF is we're just going to have to wait a little bit longer for that to take place because Judge Daniel A. Hovland has decided that the ATF is right and the ATF is all good. Now, it is important or it is not important, depending on how you want to look at it, that this is a George W. Bush appointed judge because those those George W. Bush judges ain't great on a lot of levels. Uh, but let's take a look at this. AWR Hawkins at Breitbart.com. September 12th, 2023, the North Dakota District Judge Daniel L. Hovland, a George W. Bush appointee, denied the Firearms Regulatory Accountability Coalition, or FRAC, uh, in their motion for a preliminary injunction against the ATF's pistol brace stabilizer rule. Uh, which is completely unconstitutional. It is a violation of the Second Amendment and the uh, 44 state constitutions, which have a right to keep their arms inside their amendment. Because if you don't know, the pistol brace was came out in 2012, around that time, and ATF signed off on it. Said, "Yep, it's fine. It's not a it's not a brace. Don't worry about it." They even I, I remember the first company that did it. They actually included the letter from the ATF in every box just to be like, "No, it's okay. It's actually legit." Uh, then it was it passed under 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 this was under Obama passed muster under Obama and then it was still fine under Trump and then of course all of a sudden Joey B gets in there he unleashes the ATF now they come out with these rules and now they're trying to make millions upon millions of people felons for no good reason same with the force trigger resets and of course Trump with the uh, the bump stocks and so forth going after and picking away your right to keep and bear arms. So FRAC was joined by 25 states in bringing the suit contending that the ATF's final rule on stabilizer braces, quote, and the ATF's interim guidance violates the Administrative Procedure Act. In case you don't know what the Administrative Procedure Act is, yes, Henry, I am using Wikipedia. Yeah. Sorry. Wikipedia? You're using Wikipedia as your source of information. Um. What can I say about it? I'm sorry. Uh, but essentially, it's a statute that governs the way which the administrative agencies, ATF, FBI, the Bureau of Land Management, uh, for the feds, may propose and establish regulations, and it grants the U.S. federal courts oversight over all agency actions. So pretty much it's a blank check to allow the feds to do whatever they want. Of course, it came out in 46. Not a shock. Everybody was still dealing with the aftermath of World War II and, and so forth, and you know, I've been dealing with FDR for 400 years and people were OK with the administrative state. You know, and not that it wouldn't happen today. The ATS final rule was proposed January 31st, 2023 and went into full effect on January 1st. I'm sorry, June 1st, 2023. Breitbart News reported that the proposed rule was accompanied by the statement from the ATF, which said, quote, the rules effective the date published in the Federal Register. Any weapons with quote unquote stabilizer braces or similar attachments that constitutes rifles under the NFA, the National Firearms Act, which I think is completely unconstitutional, must be registered no later than 120 days after date of publication in the Federal Register or short barrel removed and a 16 inch or longer rifle barrel attached to the firearm or permanently remove or dispose of or alter the stabilizing brace such it cannot be reattached, or the firearm is turned into your local ATF office, which I am not doing any of those if I had a pistol brace. In his decision, Judge Holen noted, the plaintiffs attacked the final rule on several grounds. One, the final rule exceeds the ATF's statutory authority. Two, that the factors adopted by the final rule and otherwise unlawful. And three, that the adjudications are unlawful and confirm the final rule is arbitrary. These are all completely and utterly valid points. But this is what happens when you are existing in a system where you are relying on courts to decide your fate. Yes, we have some good we have some good ones. Uh, Fifth Circuit down here and some other ones up there. And then you get these guys who are just like, no, because they like the federal government's authority and they seek to keep it. He rejected this. This is the judge. The plaintiff's contestants one at a time. 
using each rejection to stress his contention that the plaintiff's case cannot succeed. Very interesting that he's saying the, the plaintiff's case cannot succeed when you have decisions like the Cargill case coming out of the Fifth Circuit, uh, which says it can, or you have stat um, decisions last uh, in the last term from the Supreme Court, West Virginia versus EPA, in which Thomas clearly states that an agency like EPA, like ATF, like any of these, must have a distinct um, mandate from Congress. Now, ATF is trying to finagle that and say, well, we're using the National Firearms Act and all these other things. But that doesn't pass the muster because pistol braces were not created when the National Firearms Act was written. And so they're trying to take a square peg and fit into a round hole there. But for government, if it's written in the law, they can legalize and, and create all kinds of different meanings from them. Back into the article. Regulating the claim that the ATF exceeded its statutory authority, Hoyland wrote, quote, the courts have consistently recognized, which is weird because you have different courts that have recognized that the stabilizing brace is not constitutional, that the bump stock ban is not constitutional. You've actually had courts come out and say this, but Holland just completely ignores all that. Um, have recognized the ATF as the authority to re to interpret the National Firearms Act and the Gun Control Act, both of them, in my opinion, unconstitutional, um, where there is ambiguity, meaning that there is not likely the plaintiff will succeed on the claim. This is in, this is com in direct uh, competition or conflict with the EPA case that Thomas wrote where he said, no, you can't have ambiguity. It must be a direct line from Congress to the ATF, to BLM, to all these other agencies. As for the claim that the ATF rule is unlawful, Hoyland noted that similar claims were being made in other cases in other courts, particularly the United States Court for Appeals in the Fifth Circuit down here in New York, uh, New York, Texas, Louisiana, I believe Arkansas. He pointed out that the Fifth Circuit panel voted two to one in favor of the plaintiff, but he made clear that he agreed with the dissenting judge rather than the majority because he's got a hair across his booty. Uh, in addressing the claim that the ATF's rule is arbitrary, Hoyland wrote, quote, the plaintiff and other litigants have argued that the definition of a rifle should be limited to devices that are designed to be exclusively fired from the shoulder. But many courts, once again, he's just kind of throwing this out. Many courts have said this have rejected this interpretation of that statute, but you have had courts that agree with that. See, it's very it's very weird when he says, you have many courts that say no, but you have courts that agree with it. So you can't be subjected. This, this sounds like, and I'm, I'm a guy, I got a 140 on the LSAT practice test, so I know what I'm talking about here. Um, He's being he's being very personable. He's not actually using legal reasoning. He's he's using very subjective uh, feelings. Well, courts have said no. <laughs> Any lawyer worth their salt would say, but courts have said yes. So what are you basing your decision on? Uh, this court finds ATF has acted within the quote unquote zone of reasonableness. Once again, this is they're talking about zones and interpretation and ambiguity, which the federal government loves, which is why whenever they have one of these stabilizing rules or bump stock rules or whatever they redefine a rule as it's as ambiguous and gray area as possible so they can manipulate it however they want uh and the plaintiffs had not met their burden of demonstrating that the regulation is arbitrary and capricious which is you know turning 40 million people into to felons overnight is a pretty capricious ruling Hoyland also denied the motion for preliminary injunction against the atf rule for numerous reasons one of which was his opinion that the final rule is, quote unquote, interpretive and therefore not subject to the same requirement as legislative rules. If it's a rule that is going to put people in prison, then it needs to have every requirement possible. It needs to have every requirement out there to make sure it is of legal muster and it is within the, the frame of constitutionality. Because if you're going to put people in prison, if you're going to go to their house and demand these things and this, that, and the other thing, then you can't be like, well, we just interpreted it this way. This is a guy who's been on the bench way too long. Also, he sounds like a guy that really hates being in North Dakota. He probably graduated from Georgetown and he just hates his life up there. Quote, the irony here is that the ATF's interpretation of federal gun control laws comes under the legal doctrine called the Chevron defense based on the 84 Supreme Court case. The Chevron defense is an administrative law or principle that requires federal courts to defer to federal agencies' interpretation of an ambiguous or unclear statute that Congress delegated to the agency to administer. This is also going to get smacked down in the Cargill case. 
Congress has not given, and they did not do it in the NFA, and they did not do it in the Gun Control Act. They did not delegate, per the Chevron defense, they did not delegate um, the administrative state to do this. They never did. They never said, hey, ATF, why don't you do this? They just left it to them, and ATF has decided to interpret this rule. Big difference here, which is why the Chevron doctrine, which, which is also why you've seen the Cargill case get kind of squashed because the Chevron doctrine is one of the things at play there. Once the decision came out of the Fifth Circuit, nobody really said anything because they started to say, oh, wait, 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 wait. If they keep going, this goes to SCOTUS, we're, they're going to have to talk about the Chevron doctrine and that or deference, and that's going to destroy everything. Same thing with EPA. Um, now, Breitbart News uh, legal contributor Ken Klauski said, however, the Supreme Court this year will hear the Looper Bright case where the justices are considering overturning Chevron. And if that happens, then the ATF will not be able to get away with this going forward. And this trial court decision on pistol brace rule can, can and should be reversed on appeal. Klukowski added, also disclosing that he closed, he co-authored a brief on the Looper Bright that focused on how ATF has taken advantage of the Chevron deference to push gun control without Congress. This is absolutely true. Of course, if the Chevron deference goes away, then you're going to lose a lot of power from the federal government. So it's going to be very interesting to see how the Supreme Court takes a look at this going forward. Um, but there you go. Latest news from the tyrannical ATF. They get a win from a North Dakota judge, probably because that judge hates being up in North Dakota and he wants out and he thinks maybe this will get him on the next uh, short list of Supreme Court justices so we can get out of there um, because that's what it smells like. It smells like an absolute subjective feeling-based um decision 